All right, we got kind of a sad deal today. The uh, little 10 watt CFL that's usually in my uh, desk lamp over there, uh, lighting all these videos, has finally passed away after all these years. I'm kind of surprised it lasted as long as it did, really. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and pop this open. Uh, I cheated a little bit. I already opened this once, but uh, I didn't really look at what's in it. Let's see if I can get it open again. Uh, hopefully, I can. It just kind of clips together, so. Should be entirely possible to open this again. Yep, just like so. Uh, there's not a whole heck of a lot of interesting stuff inside of these, I don't think. But we can take a look anyway. So this, uh, let's see. Does it have a brand on it? It's UL listed. So this is like a proper, like, you know, quality one, too. Uh, helical. This is General Electric. All right, so there we go. I think it's 10 watts. Yep. So this should be a fairly good quality bulb. And when this failed, it flickered a bunch of times, and then it eventually just uh, completely died. So there might be something obviously wrong with it too. Who knows? Uh, it could be the bulb itself as well. Uh, I'll take a look in here. We've got a capacitor, which is way up in the air. I might actually cut this thing out and see if the capacitor is good because. I don't know. I kind of, I've got the funny suspicion that it's the bulb itself that's gone bad. I'm not really sure. Uh, it just kind of acted funny when it died. It flickered a bunch of times and just kind of, you know, died. <laughs> it might be something on the circuitry too. Uh, looking over it, there's nothing that's obviously burnt. Um, so I've got this capacitor way up here. It's a 200 volt, was it 10 microfarad cap. And they've got the little sort of insulation, fiberglass insulation over the legs of it so it doesn't touch anything. But it's just kind of floating way up here in the air. Uh, and the branding on it, I'm not sure about that brand. I've never, I don't think I've ever heard of that one. But uh, it's like YMW or something. It's hard to tell what those letters are even supposed to be. Uh, it's like Yima or something. I'm not sure. Uh, little transformer up here. The... Uh, that in there is presumably a choke, uh, just to reduce noise. This almost looks like it could be a choke as well. This little small, it looks like it's ferrite on the end. That's why I'm saying that. Uh, we've got presumably a fusible resistor over here. That looks to be like, what is it? Is it 4.7 ohms? Looks like, I don't really know the resistor color code all that well. It's yellow, yeah, yellow, purple, silver looks like. Which I'm presuming is 4.7 ohms. I can figure that out though. All right, I take that back. If that is yellow, purple, silver, which it looks like it is, looks like yellow, purple, silver, gold, uh, that is 0.47 ohms, not 4.7. If it was a gold band, it'd be 4.7. So that's quite a low value resistor if it is what I think it is, anyhow. So, uh, anyway. Uh, other than that, you know, there's some other little capacitors, probably all just here for uh, suppression and things like that. I presume that this is like a self-oscillating circuit because there's only two active components and they are 13,000, well, 13,003, so 13,003, I guess. Uh, they're both the same, uh, both the same part, and those are high voltage, high speed switching transistors, so... Nothing really too special there. Uh, you know, there's a couple of diodes laid out on the board. So this would be like one of the filaments for the uh, the bulb, and then the other one would be on this side. Uh, so yeah, nothing too special there. We've got the nice black marks on the the bulb from the you know signs of dying. Now, one thing I will say: Does this have a temperature rating on the capacitor? The capacitor doesn't. Have, oh, there it is. 105, 105C. Uh, this is mounted up in like a. It's a semi-closed fixture and it's mounted like this. This bulb always did get pretty hot and you see the top of it's actually uh, discolored quite a bit. Uh, so I'm kind of curious to see if that capacitor there is actually any good now because I mean it doesn't look bloated or anything. I'm just curious as to what it would measure if we took this guy out of the circuit and just put it across the meter. It is a General Electric branded light bulb, so you would expect at least decent uh, components. I honestly don't remember how old this uh, bulb is. Uh, it's definitely as old as his YouTube channel, but uh, probably actually quite a bit older than that. 
I'm just curious as to what this reads, and I'm not going to bother zeroing out the meter or anything. It should be 10 microfarads. And it's reading like 9, so I need to hold that on there for a little longer. Hopefully without slipping off of it. Kind of uh, hard to do for one thing, and then it's really hard to do when you try to do it with a camera in the way. This isn't a scientific test of the capacitor by any means, but uh, yeah, 9.03 looks like. So that actually, that's within the 20%, I'm sure. I'd imagine this is a 20% rated device. Don't see where it says, but it's probably a 20% rated device. So it's within spec. So that capacitor is actually just fine. So, uh, you know, my guess is that the actual light bulb itself is what died, but I'm not entirely sure because like there's nothing that's obviously blown up in here. And if I had to place a blame on something, it probably would have been that cap. So anyway, that's uh, kind of interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and cut the wires to the bulb too. take the circuit board all the way out. I'm not going to bother like reverse engineering this. I'm sure that's all, you know, been done before. So you can cut this somewhere on the top that haven't cut all the way through that pin and cut it there and cut it like here. There's half of it. Now there's a couple of resistors on the back surface mount stuff actually. I shouldn't drop those. So basically, construction of this, it's got like some type of glue over that that's like completely hard now. Uh, and then, you know, it's a CFL bulb. It's just got the filaments going down in there. But uh, anyway, the back of this, it's not a lot on it, but there's a couple of, a couple of resistors here and there and a random cap over there. So nothing, too fancy in here. Yeah, so fairly simple. I kind of wonder what it makes or it costs to produce something like this. And I'm sure it's way less than what they charge for the bulb. We'll go ahead and just free this thing off of here too, just for the fun of it. All right, so there's not really a whole lot to these boards. It's basically just a bunch of uh, passive components. So there's the top part. A lot of this, a lot of this is gonna be for filtering. Uh, just to reduce the amount of noise going back into the power lines of your house. So, not much to it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and uh, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.